blockchain is the most important discovery uh, uh, since the introduction of double entry bookkeeping. So they acknowledge this is extremely important. So Anton, can you explain the blockchain of Bitcoin, how it was created, what's it's innovating and how it can be implemented into the financial system? Sure. So the blockchain is a global distributed ledger that provides immediate settlement of transactions. And I'll explain now in plain words what it means. So ledger is just a notepad where you write something. So for instance, if you and I were to do a transaction and swap assets, we can write it in a notepad saying, okay, your asset is, is now mine and mine is yours. So that's a ledger. The ledger is global in a sense that everybody has a copy of it every, and everybody has an access to it. And finally, the immediate settlement means that when we do a transaction, the assets, assets are actually swapped immediately. And the way that happens is basically that these special entities called the miners that maintain the blockchain, they receive instructions from both you and me in this hypothetical hypothetical example and then they actually need to check that what I own I indeed own and what you own you indeed own and then they swap the assets and this is basically what it happens and the blockchain actually emerged as an infrastructure supporting the transactions of a cryptocurrency called the Bitcoin okay so what I describe now is actually in a stark, contra stark contrast the way the financial system works today so for instance the even though the blockchain is a global ledger where we have immediate settlement in the financial system now, we always have local ledgers and the settlement is actually takes two or three days. And actually we have all experienced this. If you have ever sent money abroad, then we would realize it takes like two or three days for the settlement to occur. And this is because of the way that the current financial infrastructure works. So the way this the blockchain will be integrated with the financial system is through the something called the Carl, Carl, colored coin protocol so it, the blockchain supports transactions of bitcoin but you can take a bitcoin a small fraction of it and then write something something on top of it as a contract so for instance you can take a bitcoin and say this represents shares of google so Liquid Corporation, they have created a whole marketplace on blockchain. Can you tell me a bit about what they're doing and their plans for the future? Yes. So we are actually building a global marketplace on top of the blockchain, just using it as an infrastructure. And we are actually want to create a marketplace where you can trade any asset against any as other asset. So for instance, if I want to pay you for a service that you did for me, I can actually do that by paying with shares of a company. So this is in a stark co contrast to there we, where you always have some kind of a local market. So what are some of the challenges that are preventing the development of blockchain? Is it security? Is it getting people to actually use the currency? I definitely agree that uh, security issues are extremely important now. That's that's basically because many times we have heard that uh, that the assets from people were stolen when they were using the blockchain. So um, that's a huge issue. But not uh, but especially when you're using so-called cryptocurrencies, when you're using colored coins that represent uh, real-world assets, that's less of an issue. And I'll explain very easy why is because a colored coin always has an issuer. So if you have a colored coin from an issuer and somebody steals it from you, you can always go back to the issuer and say, please cancel the stolen coin and give me a new one. So this is not so relevant if we are talking about real world assets. Uh, the biggest challenge is actually to uh, uh, regulate and secure the entry points into the blockchain. So to, for instance, if somebody wants to wire money onto a, a platform, onto a marketplace, they have to be, uh, uh, there has to be a setup that prevents money laundering and criminal activity. So this is kind of the, a big issue. But I would argue that the most important issue from everything is actually creating a real world connection between an asset that exists in the real world as we know it and an asset that is on the blockchain. So I'll explain what that means is if you have shares that are listed on, a, on the blockchain, there has to be a regulatory link that gives you safety that in fact, if you own a digital asset on the blockchain, that that translates into your ownership in the real world. So if you go to a notary somewhere that if you say I have a colored coin representing shares, that they acknowledge that as, a, as an ownership. So this is actually the most important aspect. Blockchain will go mainstream in a sense that it will be used, but people will not know about it. And I'll give you an analogy that's very simple is, 
you and I both use internet all the time, but I can be sure that both you and I don't know what are the underlying protocols that send in the information when we use the internet. In the same sense, the blockchain will be just used, people will acknowledge that it exists, but they will not know the details. So what's the central banks and the regulators' opinion on blockchain? I have heard many times that people claim that, uh, some, that the regulators will try to prevent the blockchain or they will try to manage it too much. I, I actually I argue this is not the case, this is overblown. As soon as people understand that the blockchain is just used an, as an infrastructure for settlement and as a ledger, then all of these worries go away. And uh, just to give you some practical example is that uh, with regards to central banks, both the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England have clearly stated that the blockchain is the most important important discovery uh, uh, since the introduction of double entry bookkeeping. So they acknowledge this is extremely important, extremely relevant. Thank you, Anton, for joining us in the studio today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. It's been a pleasure as well. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to click on our channel because we have other interviews on Bitcoin. Goodbye for now.